forces are again part of that team as we announce two new deployments to the NHS Nightingale facilities in Harrogate and Bristol. And across the UK, this extra hospital capacity, which itself comes on top of the 33,000 additional beds we've managed to free up across the NHS, that's the equivalent of building an extra 50 district general hospitals. And as I said, that has safeguarded the capacity in our hospitals, both to care for coronavirus patients, but also to make sure other people get the urgent care or the emergency treatment they need. People used to joke in this country that you could never build a hospital that quickly. Well, we didn't just build one, we built seven, and we thank our armed forces for helping them make that happen. We didn't just build one hospital that quickly, we built And you know, seven. for many countries seven. around the world, including yeah, modern democracies, the sight of their military on the streets in a national emergency could be a cause for concern or even trepidation. But for the British people, the sight of our armed forces working side by side with our brilliant NHS staff offers a calm reassurance that the task is at hand and that we will come through this crisis. Now, I make no bones about it. There have been challenges. There still are challenges. We're not there yet. We continue to ramp up the testing capacity, which will play a really important role in the next phase of the crisis. Amidst a global shortage in personal protective equipment, we've distributed over a billion items to the front line where it's needed most. We've just brought in Lord Dayton, who helped organise the London Olympics to boost our domestic supply even further. And I'm on the phone every day pursuing the next batch of deliveries from abroad with the support of our Tala 